Let's balance the equation for Na3P plus CaF2, sodium phosphide plus calcium fluoride. We'll also take a look at the type of reaction. So the type of reaction here, if you look at this, the sodium and the calcium, they're changing places. We have sodium phosphide, but now we have sodium fluoride. We had calcium fluoride, now we have calcium phosphide. So double displacement reaction. Let's balance the equation. We have three sodium atoms, one phosphorus, one calcium, and two fluorine atoms. Product side, one sodium. Then we have two of these phosphorus atoms, three calcium, one fluoride. We could start balancing the sodiums, but I think it works better to balance the calciums first, because when we put a three in front of the CaF2, we have one times three, that balances the calcium, but now we have two times three that gives us six. So if we started with the sodium, we'd have to redo it later. Let's put a six here. So we have one sodium times six, that gives us six of those, but the one fluorine times six, that'll give us six of those. That balances the fluorines. It's left with the phosphorus and the sodium. We need six sodiums here to balance this six. So we'll put a two here, three times two. That gives us six, one times two. That gives us two. We're done. This equation is balanced. If we wanted to write the states, this sodium phosphide, sodium compounds are very soluble. Usually fluorides are soluble. Calcium fluoride really is not very soluble. So we're gonna put an S here. If you look this up on a solubility chart, you'll see that. Sodium fluoride is soluble. And calcium phosphide, it actually decomposes in water. This is aqueous, so this is all in water here. This is gonna decompose into different compounds. There's a link at the end of this video that explains that decomposition reaction for Ca3P2. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for Na3P plus CaF2 and the type of reaction, double displacement. Thanks for watching.